What is up guys? Thank you so much for being here. So today we're talking about this great little ultra wide zoom lens. It hasn't even been out that long. It came out in the 2020s, but is it still even worth it? Before we get into this video, if you guys can hit the like button, super simple thing you can do that literally takes about one second, it actually makes a huge difference for my channel, so I'd really appreciate that. We're gonna start off by going over the build quality and features of the lens, then I'll talk about some pros and cons, and I'll end it off with how I've used the lens and who it might be for. The lens body is really lightweight and compact, weighing only 11.8 ounces or 335 grams and being 3.4 inches long and 2.87 inches wide. It obviously comes with a lens cap and a lens hood and a filter thread size of 67 millimeters, which is really nice because that's a really common size. When you're all the way wide at 11 millimeters, the minimum focus distance is only 5.9 inches, which is super nice because it just allows you to get up close and personal. And then at 20 millimeters, you're gonna get a little bit further, but it's because you're zoomed in. So the minimum focus distance is 9.4 inches, but that's still super nice. I mean, zoomed in all the way, that's still way closer than your arm length. One minor downside is that it kind of feels cheap, and I don't know if it has to do with the plastic body because I've had other lenses with plastic bodies, but this one just, kind of in my opinion, just looks a little bit cheaper. I'm not saying that it is cheap by any means because I've used this lens in a lot of different situations and it's never let me down, so I really do think it's a high quality lens. It just kind of gives off that cheap vibe, if that makes any sense. The focus ring is really smooth and works great and has a pretty good texture, but it's not quite as grippy. The zoom ring seems to have a much more aggressive rubber, which I really like, but it doesn't seem quite as smooth and it's a little bit noisy. You can see when it closes and opens, and even as it's turning. But I mean, it does work great and it doesn't really like lose its spot. Like sometimes if you're carrying a lens, it can slowly start to sink out and this one doesn't do that. So that's definitely a plus. So that's it for the features. There's no custom buttons or anything, but that's fine. I don't think this guy needs it. So let's go ahead and get into the pros of the lens, starting with like the number one reason why most people are gonna want this, which is the aperture. I believe this was the very first lens to actually have the f2.8 aperture on an ultra wide zoom lens for the Sony APS-C cameras. And that's actually a really big deal to be able to zoom through the different focal lengths and still keep that f2.8 aperture because that not only lets in more light, it gives you a more shallow depth of field if you wanna get that more cinematic look with that blurry background, and it just creates really nice photos. So there's just all kinds of advantages to having the f2.8 aperture because on APS-C cameras, they obviously have a smaller sensor than your full frame cameras, and so they don't typically bring in as much light as a full frame camera. And so it's a little bit harder to get that nice clean footage at night or in low light. They also don't create as much blurry background. And so again, being able to have the f2.8 through a zoom like this on your APS-C camera, it's just really rare and hard to find. So it was a big deal. The next pro is definitely the actual quality of the footage that comes out of here because it's one thing to have the f2.8 aperture, but if the photos and video just aren't as sharp or like have nice contrast, then it won't really matter. But this lens really is a lot sharper than my old Sony 10 to 18 F4, much better than my old Sony F4 when it came to like subjects being backlit and just bright situations like that. It held a lot more contrast. Another pro that I'll touch on quickly is the autofocus. The autofocus has been very reliable. I've used this thing on a couple different cameras, my APS-C A6700 as well as my full frame camera. And I haven't noticed any issues with the autofocus. We'll be doing some testing up against another lens that we'll talk about in a bit. And the last pro that we'll talk about is definitely the overall build quality. I know we kind of touched on it already and I mentioned that it's got a little bit of that cheap vibe to it, but overall I would still consider the build quality a pro just because it is so lightweight and compact and to have that f2.8 in this very small compact body. And I also forgot to mention that it does have a weather sealing gasket right here. Obviously you don't wanna take it out if it's pouring rain, but if it's just sprinkling, it's not gonna bother it whatsoever. You should be good so long as your camera is also weather sealed. And so that's a big advantage as well because again, my last ultra wide zoom lens, that Sony 10 to 18, 
it didn't have that little rubber seal on there. So I have to be really careful, you know, any little bit of dust or water, cause it's not just with sprinkling, right? If you're out in, a, in the desert in a dusty situation, that dust can get right through there, surprisingly, but it can get right through there and it can get on your sensor. Having that weather sealing gasket on there really does make a big difference. It's a small, simple thing, but again, that's part of why I'm considering the build quality a pro because it does take into account those small little things. And I've been using this a lot all over the place, like I said, and it still looks like new. So obviously they did something right. To be honest, when I first bought this lens, I didn't really have any cons other than the fact that, again, it does kind of look a little cheapy, but it's such a minor thing to me. And then I guess the only other con is that it doesn't have like any internal like optical stabilization. With the newer Sony APS-C cameras, if you do have one of the newer ones, they have such good stabilization and active stabilization that it really doesn't matter anymore. I mean, obviously it would still help. Any little bit still kind of like stacks on top of it and makes it a little bit more stable. But if I really want something super stable, I'm just gonna use a gimbal anyways. It's not a big deal. And I don't think they would have been able to keep it this small and compact had they included any kind of stabilization like that. And I know a lot of people seem to like not want this lens because of the new power zoom F4 that Sony put out. It's supposed to be sharper and better than their old ultra wide zoom that I used to have. But the problem is that I don't understand why people would want that one because that one doesn't have optical stabilization like their old ultra wide lens had. What does it really have over this? I mean, it doesn't have optical stabilization and neither does this one. And this one has a better aperture at f2.8, that one's f4. I do understand that that one, I believe doesn't zoom, so you don't have to worry about it getting like smaller and bigger if you're trying to balance it on a gimbal. But I mean, this one doesn't really extend out that far. So I haven't had any issues when I had it on a gimbal. So I don't see any competitors to this lens that have stabilization. So it would be nice, you know, and it is technically a con. Again, I don't think it's a big deal. Now there's two cons and these are the ones that I didn't have when I actually bought the lens because at the time they weren't cons. The two things are the price and the size. The reason I say they weren't cons when I bought the lens is because when I bought this, the price was very good for what you were getting. I mean, the old Sony 10 to 18 that I used to own was still going for 900 something dollars. And this one brand new, I believe is around 800 or eight something. And so I was getting a much better aperture and a sharper lens and still a light compact lens. No problem, no questions asked, that's definitely not a con. But the reason that I bring them up as cons now is because there's a new kid on the block it just came out, which is why I'm making this entire video as to if this lens that's not even that old is still worth it. Because if it wasn't for this new lens, this would definitely still be worth it. But we've got this guy. Just came out, it's the Sigma 10 to 18. And I mean, look at the difference. This thing is ridiculously small. And I believe it's the same filter thread size, 67 millimeters, same width on the front end, but you can see it tapers back to be a little smaller. It's significantly shorter. It feels more dense, even though it's a lot smaller. I don't know if it's lighter, but we'll get into that in a future video when I actually do a full on comparison between the two and we compare every little detail. So the reason those two things have sort of become cons, even though they're not, because it was a great price for what you're getting and it's still light and compact, but compared to the new kit on the block, even with the Sigma fully extended, it's still shorter than this one when it's not even extended out. So suddenly the size and price become a bit of a con because this one is significantly cheaper. I believe it's 599 and this is around 800 or eight something. When you can get this for a couple hundred bucks less and it's Sigma, so you know it's gonna be high quality and it's smaller Then suddenly this starts to become, well, is it still worth it? But hey, before we jump off of the train of the Tamron, we still need to do a lot of testing with that Sigma because even though it is a Sigma and I trust the brand and I think it's gonna be a much better lens, or I shouldn't say much better, but I think it's gonna be a little bit better overall, but we just don't know yet. It doesn't change the fact that this is still a great lens because it is. Let's go ahead and get into the last part of this video and then I'll tell you if I think that this is worth buying. All right, so as for how I personally have used this lens, I mean, I've used it for a lot because it's basically been my main and only ultra wide zoom lens over the last year and a half or so for both my cameras because I don't own an ultra wide zoom on my full frame yet because 
I mean, they're just kind of expensive and I wanna get a really good one. So I've just been using this on both because even though I have some primes on my full frame, um, I don't really have anything this wide. Cause even on a full frame, if you take in the crop factor, this is still around a 15 and a half to 30 millimeter. And so it's a great zoom range and it's still much wider than my like 24 millimeter prime and my 24 to 105. Definitely been my go-to for vlogging, for content creation, I guess you could say, because obviously I post videos on YouTube. I've created vlogs with the A6700 on this. I've created vlogs on my A7 IV with this. Hiked in the mountains several times with both cameras with this lens. I've traveled with this to San Diego and to Joshua Tree out in the desert and all kinds of adventures. It's really been a workhorse lens for me and that's why I said it's really high quality and it just hasn't let me down. Now as for who should get this lens, I mean, there's a few different situations or reasons why you should want it. I mean, for one, an ultra wide zoom, in my opinion, can pretty much fit in anybody's photography kit. Um, obviously, if you're just like a niche shooter of some sort, if you're just doing sports, you might not need a wide angle lens because you want to be up close and personal and zoomed into those athletes or whatever. But for the most part, pretty much anybody can use this, but obviously it's going to thrive if you're like a content creator because you can use it as your studio lens as I've done a couple times when vlogging, obviously getting B-roll shots for, you know, when you're out and about because it's just a good out and about focal length. If you're going in and out of places, you might need something that's wider because if you're going into a building, everything's a little tighter. It's just a really good lens if you're doing real estate photography or videos as well, because obviously you wanna make the space look larger, the rooms look larger, and you know this really shows off the entire space well and makes it look roomy. And so it's just great for a lot of things and I highly recommend it. But obviously there's a little caveat now because of that new lens. And again, I'm gonna do some testing and then we'll really see. So to answer the question of whether or not this lens is still worth it, I'm gonna say absolutely yes, but not if you're paying the original full price. Cause again, this was still a great value when it first came out, even at $800, I believe it was. With the new Sigma coming out, I, I don't think it's worth it for that price when you can get that one for 600 but I have seen this one drop in price and even new now, it doesn't cost 800. I believe on Amazon, I saw it for 699, which is a much better price for this. And so I'm gonna put a link in the description down below if you guys are interested. But for the most part, I'm gonna say it's absolutely worth it, but definitely try and find it for that 500 something dollar range used because even at 699, again, I think that Sigma is gonna be a better value at $5.99 and so, you know, if you can find this used, absolutely get it. Otherwise, you might be better off with that Sigma. But with all that being said, I just wanna thank you so much for watching and I hope this information was helpful for you. And if you like this kind of content, anything that has to do with like lens reviews, camera gear, lens straps, camera backpacks, anything like that, definitely subscribe because I put a lot of this kind of content out and I'm hopefully gonna be putting out a lot more in the future. But just thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.